Okay, so I have not opened this file yet at all, but it's pretty cool. Sam invited me to the project via this people link, and so it just showed up in my Fusion 360, no emailing files, and double click it. Sweet. So, okay, so this is his original, um, let's see here, S screen canvases, that's right, so I can turn that off. Uh, it's cool that he actually, that transferred with it. I didn't know that would necessarily happen. Um, and, and that is the elephant in the room, is these threads. I don't have a physical gas cap, and I'm not sure Sam does either. So if he can model them, maybe we'll grind a form tool and do it in the CNC lathe. Um, if it's a ball end mill, we could do it on the fourth axis. But right now, Fusion 360 doesn't do fourth axis this way. So I'd have to hop into Sprout Can, which isn't that much fun. Um, but we'll, we'll tackle that here in a, in a little while. Uh, let's take a look at this design. I would rather not have these um, big sweeping fillets. I would rather them be chamfers. Now, that's a question as from a design standpoint, and Sam may trump me and override me, but it's a lot easier for me to mill these as chamfers. Um, so let's do this. We can pick, click on them once. I see that that's um, the feature. So I'm going to roll the model back. And now, actually, I'll alter right here, and I'm going to delete. Actually, you know what? No, we can actually just suppress. That way I can turn it back on if I don't like what I'm about to do, which is modify chamfer. One, two, those two will say point one. Okay, actually, so that doesn't work, obviously. We've got to fill it the corner first. So let's unsuppress this, edit it, and you can hold the control key. That's what makes it, um, see how you can't really see what you would click to um, undo certain of these edges right here. If I hold control, they pop up. And so I'm fine using a ball end mill on the bottom there. And I'm obviously, and I'm fine, certainly fine and want to fill it that inside. I, I would rather chamfer this outside if it looks okay. Um, it's a pretty different look. So the problem with the radius tools or the fillet tool from an actual end mill machining standpoint, let's delete this and show that again. Edit feature, we'll add control again to click and add these two. Is, uh, well, first off, we've got a problem with the, the fact that this is a pretty tight, uh, let's see, how do I get that radius? So it would be a full engagement, which is going to be really hard to get a good surface finish. So I, if we're going to do this, what I would rather do is have a smaller fillet at the top. We could also um, 3D interpolate and ball end mill the finish. And that's going to be what prevails here. That lets us keep this as a fillet. Um, the question is going to be the surface finish. That's a longer time operation, but well, uh, I, don't, I didn't like the fillet, so, or I didn't like the chamfer, so fillet it is. We'll leave that be. Um, Sam had mentioned using certain imperial dimensions because we're using a, a imperial or non-metric tooling. No need to worry about that. That's one of the great things about CNC. If you give me a six millimeter radius or dimension, I can use an imperial end mill. The CNC will take care of, of what the equivalents are. We'll still program it all in inches for, from a G20 or G21 G code standpoint, but certainly no worries. Um, and, and really, Sam could have sent this whole thing over in millimeters and we would have been fine. One thing I learned Sam ran these, let's see, where is it? This pattern here. I always pattern features and he patterned faces. I actually didn't think that that worked. Um, it did work. I actually would love to hear from somebody below. Is there a reason not to do that? Because it worked pretty well. Um, same thing here on the outside. That's a fillet, not a chamfer. And I also meant to mention the hard thing about using these um, fillet type corner radius end mills is you. it's really hard to get them dialed in perfectly. They're also pretty expensive. We do have some. We bought them used at an auction. This is also really tricky because you really couldn't use, they come to a hard 90, and we've got this gentle sweeping dome, this gas cap, 
So no problem. What we're going to do here is throw this in the lathe, CNC lathe at some point. That'll make it really easy to uh, radius that both sides of this for the fillet. So that's no big deal at all. Uh, I think I mentioned this at the beginning. I can't remember, but um, I'm going to ask Sam if he can take a stab at modeling the threads based on what he came up with from a um, from a photo standpoint, one of the big weaknesses in Fusion 360 that I've, we're pushing them to get is right now you can't do a cut sweep of a helical, like a helical pattern. There's no helical sketch tool. Uh, you can do the solid model coil, um, but I'll be actually curious to see what Sam's comes up with, or maybe this project uh, grinds to a halt because we don't figure that out. I, think, I thought he did a great job importing the turbo logo. Sam, I had to laugh. We did a Fusion Friday on importing SVGs. Uh, we handled it just a little bit differently, but um, I like how Sam did it, and it was nice to see um, that I wasn't missing something. Unfortunately, you just can't get a preview until you click OK to import it. So, oh well. It's also just fun to watch and see somebody else works. And, you know, this is a pretty cool-looking part, and you guys can see it wasn't that hard to, uh, to get there. The last thing is how do we do this engraving? You know, we obviously have a true three-dimensional surface. It curves along the X as well as a little bit along the Y um, in Z, varying Z heights. So I think this is going to look great if we don't try to machine it out because, like Sam mentioned, we would have to add, you know, tighter. You can't machine a little corner like that. But rather, if we do a 360 fourths ball end mill and trace along it should have a nice clean look and we can probably get it to kind of pop when we do some sort of coating on it I'll have to think about that maybe we could do like a color fill in it but it should be pretty good I'll work on the cam tool pass to handle that 3d engraving I think I've got some ideas on that so I'm actually gonna say um, no change is needed I can the last thing I guess I'd think of is let me make sure yes the diameter is 3.15 that's fine if Sam were at like 3.02, I may say, hey, um, let's drop it down to 295. That way I can use three inch round, but 315 is enough over. We'll, we'll just start with like three and a quarter inch round bar. Uh, so I'll throw it back in your court, Sam. If you want to tackle uh, modeling the threads, I'll start tweaking on the cam tool pass for some of the more complex stuff. And we'll be back, folks, for part three.